So we're going to talk in three point, section, chapter 3.1 about frequency tables. And frequency tables are used to uh, keep track of how much data you have because, you know, when you have a list of data, it's hard to look at. So we put them into columns. We have our first column of uh, the categories. You know, these could be um, A, B, C, D. They could be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, male, female. And the second category, second column is going to be the frequency that these categories occur and we count up each one. Now, um, that's what happens in a frequency band and we'll show you one in a second. Um, because we can't always have all the values, you know, there are lots of values in there. If I ask for um, how much money do you earn, I'm going to have a vast, a vast number of choices. So I put them into groups, and I say, well, I'm going to put them into, you know, from 50 to 100,000, 50 to 99,000, and 100 to 149,000, and 150 to 200,000, because we want to make sure that our groups are the same size. You know, they could be in groups of size 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 2, 3, 4, 100, you know, 1,000. It just depends on how vast our different our ranges are. But those groups are just called bins. So that's what binning is. And now here's an example that they wanted to, to have with you. They wanted to show you. Um, they want you to take a list of values, the revenues of the Dow uh, 30 jo uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, 30 stocks. And they want you to make a frequency table of the revenue. Now notice we start with, looks like a, the lowest one here is McDonald's at 21.6 billion and the highest one is Exxon Mobil at 347 billion so we have a huge spread actually sorry Walmart at 351 billion so we have such a huge spread we can't do them by once and uh, the discussion the pros and cons well the more bins you have the smaller number it's going to be but you're going to have a lot of way across if you have the bins are too large, you know, then we're going to only have a couple of columns and things are going to get lost. Because if I could do hundreds here, I'd have, notice I'd have a lot from 0 to 100. And then I'd only have a couple here from 100 to 200. And a couple from, only one from 200 to 300. And a couple from 300 to 400. So, you know, I can have fewer things, but it looks weird. It looks skewed. And so, what we have here is they broke it up into 50s and from 0 to 49.9 and the reason they use the decimal point one place because they had de one point decimal place in the, the data so and they counted up each one and they found they had a total of 30 so that's their frequency table now after that we have a couple of other things we can do we can do relative frequency and cumulative frequency and relative as we know we see the word relative, we're going to divide. Relative frequency is just the number of things that are in the category divided by all the things that there are. And a cumulative frequency is adding up all the preceding categories. And here's a graph of table chart of what they look like. Here's our scale, one, two, three, four, five, and how many times each thing occurred. The relative frequency, we had two out of twenty, three out of twenty, nine out of twenty, and so on and each one of those turned into a decimal. They have to total one. They don't total one, you made a mistake. And the cumulative frequency is we add up all the previous ones. And if at the bottom you don't get the total, again, you made a mistake. So those are cumulative and relative frequencies. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this on a Excel spreadsheet in a minute. Um, so that's all 3.1. And then we're going to go into 3.2 with a separate video. So, okay, so I'm going to show you how to use a frequency uh, distribution. And we're going to use the pivot table function in Excel. Now, I have the children's movie um, data from our stats book. And I've gotten rid of the um, cigarette use and alcohol use because I don't care about those. We're just going to look at the lengths. All right, so to create a pivot table, we need to insert pivot table. 
and it asks us, well, where's the range of information we're interested in? And we're really only interested in the length. So we highlight all that, and we're telling it we're going to put it on our access to worksheet. So that's fine. Now, I have my length. I'm going to drag it into the rule labels, and I'm going to drag it into the sum values. And now, what it first does is, the first thing it does is it adds them. So we need to get rid of that and change it to count. And we do that in the value field setting. We go to count and click OK. And so now we can see that we had two that were 64 minutes and one that was 69 and one that was 70 and so on. Well, that's great, but um, we want to make this shorter. So we click into the column here and we go to group fields. And what this does is it brings up our groupings and we can start it at whatever level we want. So let's start it at so 60 minutes and we'll end it at 120 minutes and we can go up by 10 minute lengths. So I click OK and it's shortened it now. I have 60 to 69 minutes, 70 to 79 minutes, 80 to 89 minutes, 90 to 99 minutes and because there wasn't a hundred anything in the hundred it removed that bin essentially. So now I have my counts. I'm going to now calculate my um, relative frequencies. Again, I'm going to take my lengths and drag it into values. And notice now I have two counts. Okay. Well, I don't want this to be a count. I want this to change and be displayed as um, a percent. And I can do that by clicking here in the show value as a percent of the grand total. And so now I have my percentages in here. And the last thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to change these to say, you know, frequency and relative frequency. And there you have it, our um, frequency table with our relative frequencies of our lengths of children's movies.